Okay, so let us continue our discussion. We are in uh, fourth week, so week four, and then uh, this is lecture one. Now, in this week, we are going to cover uh, a few important topics. So, first, what we'll do, uh, we'll find out response due to. impulse. Then using that information, so we will find out further response due to any arbitrary loading and this is important because uh, for example, if you take uh, a structure against earthquake, so earthquake loading is uh, is a time history that we record at site and then using that time history we find out the response. Now before we do that, let us first see what we have already derived. Now if you recall, we have derived the response for a mass spring dashpot system. So we have this is the mass and then we have a damper. C stiffness is K and mass that vibrates along X and we apply say a force. Now in this case F of T is equal to some constant say P. So how does it look like? So for all T if I plot, so for all T we have forcing function which is constant. So, this is P. Now, for that the equation of motion is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f of t and of course, we have initial conditions. So, the total solution will have again complementary function and particular integral and if you recall the solution for the complementary function is e to the power minus eta omega n t within bracket a cos omega d t plus b sin omega d t. Then uh, that is the complementary function, then we have the particular integral that is p by k. Obviously, when you solve this equation to find out the two constants, we have a and b, these are the two constants and for that we need initial conditions. So, we have x at time 0 is x naught and the velocity at time 0 is also given. Now, using these two information, you can derive the two constants. So, A in this case will be x naught minus P by K and then B you can also evaluate this will be 1 by omega D and then within bracket x naught dot plus eta omega N within bracket x naught minus P by K. So, that is the complete solution. So, this solution is for a constant force for all t. Now, if you have a special case, just imagine we have p equal to 1 and then we have the initial conditions also. Now, if we put p equal to 1, that means a unit force acting on the structure, then for that uh, we have the solution and let us also consider x naught is equal to 0 and x naught dot is also equal to 0. Then that is 0, 0 initial condition. So, x of t for this condition x of t will be equal to e to the power minus eta omega n t. We can write down a 
will be equal to minus 1 by k and b will be equal to 1 by omega d then within bracket eta omega n and then minus p by k. So, if you simplify this expression p is equal to 1. So, we can remove this. So, we have 1 by k. So, this will be minus eta omega n divided by omega d that is omega n square root of 1 minus eta square times k. So, this will get cancelled. So, we will have minus eta by k times 1 by square root of 1 minus eta square. So, the solution will be a is minus 1 by k. So, in place of a cos omega t, we have minus 1 by k cos omega t and then in place of b, we can write down minus eta by square root of 1 minus eta square times 1 by k. This will be multiplied by sin omega dt and then we have plus 1 by k. So, that is the solution. So, we have the solution for 0, 0 initial conditions and unit loading. Now, this condition, so we have x of t for what? For p equal to 1, x not equal to 0 and x not dot is also equal to 0. So, this is we denote it by g of t. I will explain that in a minute. And for that, we have the expression 1 by k 1 minus e to the power minus eta omega n t. Then, we have cos of omega d t plus the sign component. This is called g of t is called indicial response. Now, using this information, we will further solve the problem and we will see how we can find out the response of a system due to a impulse. What does the impulse mean? It is a, say we have a impulse at say equal to t star. So, at this point we have, so this is the force for all t and this is called impulse. So, we will solve it in a minute, but for that we will use this information. And now, let us see how we can extend this uh, derivation, what we have for initial response to find out the response due to an impulse. And then I will explain why it is so important. Now, for that, let us define, we already know a function called a side step function. So, let us define that. So, if we have say a function u t minus say a is equal to 0 for all t less than a and is equal to say 1 for all t greater than a, then we have a function called Heaviside step function. How does it look like? So, this is the time axis and we have u of t. So, at t equal to a, so say this is the point. So, at this point we have 
a step like function whose magnitude is 1. Now using this function what we will do we will first find out the response due to a block loading that we will do and then finally we will convert that using some limiting conditions to this impulse response. Now before we do that let us uh, just quickly uh, see the property of this step function. Now just imagine we have this system and we have already solved this for a kind of loading which starts from t equal to 0. So, this is p for all t and this is our f of t. So, this is x of t and then mass c and k. Okay. So, as I said our main objective is to find out the response for a force of a block loading. So, this we will do first and then we will see how we can extend this solution. So, we have already done this. Now, of course, this function we can represent using heaviside step function. The only thing is this u t minus a where this is t equal to a, but in this case a equal to 0. So, it starts from uh, t equal to 0 and continues for all t. So, we have already done that. So, we will see what is the property of uh, this heaviside step function and then we will move further. Just imagine this case as our objective is to find out the response due to this loading say this is p. So, we can actually imagine this as a combination of two different loading. So, one starts from t equal to 0. So, that is the p and then we have another loading that actually starts from t equal to say a, but in the negative side with equal magnitude. Now, instead of doing that if I just redraw it and instead of addition if I use a subtraction then the total response due to this two loading. So, we have f 1 of t and then f 2 of t. If we combine these two because this is a linear system, so what we will have the response due to this block load. So, if I write down say f of t for this block loading, we can just write it in a form. So, p times u of t that means p is the amplitude that I multiply with a unit heaviside step function. So, it will start from t equal to 0 and it will continue forever. Then I subtract p times u of t minus a. That is because we have two step functions and using that we can actually express this block loading. Now, so we have f of t as p times u of t minus p times u of t minus a. Now, how does this look like? We have a block Now, just imagine if we have limit a tends to 0 and 
p times a tends to 1 f of t will be what limit a tends to 0 p times a that tends to 1. So, what we have here p times u of t minus p times u t minus a. So, that is the expression of f of t. Now, if I divide it by say a and then multiply this by a, so everything remains same. So, what we have limit a tends to 0, then p times a tends to 1 is what we have p a within bracket u of t minus u of t minus a divided by a. Obviously, this quantity in limiting sense it is 1 and the remaining part what is that? It is the differential of u with respect to t and if we do that what we get is a Dirac delta function. Right. How does it look like? Obviously, we will have a coordinate system t and this is f of t and because we have a delta function which is at t equal to 0 because a tends to 0 that is the condition we have applied. So, we have the delta function defined at t equal to 0 and its magnitude is 1. Okay. So, that gives us some idea how we can extend the response for unit force that we have already derived and 0, 0 initial condition what we call initial response. Using that response we can now figure out what should be the response due to this unit impulse. That we will do next. So, what we do first is uh, find out the response. So, we have f of t f of t is defined as p times u of t minus p times u of t minus a. Now, we apply this f of t for that we get a response x of t and then we have p times this is the magnitude of the force times a heaviside step function. So, for u of t that is the unit force for that we have already find out what is the response it is g of t. So, that should be the response when we apply the block loading shown is at the top of the screen. right? Now, what we have already proved that if we have limit a tends to 0 and then p times a tends to 1, what we have? If we have uh, f of t defined by this expression, so what ultimately we will get d u d t. Right. Now, instead of that if we find out what is the limiting value of x of t in the limiting sense. So, what we will have on the right hand side limit a tends to 0 and p a tends to 1. What we have p a within bracket g of t minus g t minus a divided by a. Again this p times a tends to 1. So, what we will have is first differential of g.
Okay, so what we get is this is the response when we have this limiting condition applied on the forcing function given here. So, if I apply this limiting condition on the forcing function, what we get? Impulse. as the external force and for that we also get the response we denoted by h of t and this is called impulse response function. So, it is very straightforward. So, we defined the block force ranging from t equal to 0 to t equal to a and then we apply the limiting condition what we get is basically the response of the system due to a impulse and the response is called impulse response function. How will I get it this h of t the expression of h of t? I will differentiate g of t with respect to t immediately what I will get is the response due to impulse. It is very simple. So, what we have the expression for g of t. So, let me again uh, write it down. So, g of t is 1 by k within bracket 1 minus e to the power minus eta omega n t then within bracket cos of omega d t plus the sign component At the end of this uh, week, we will have a MATLAB session and there we will actually plot this. So, we will plot this, plot this function in MATLAB that we will do and we will study how this function looks like. But for the time being, our objective is to find out the impulse response function that means the response of a mass spring dash pot system when we apply a uh, direct delta function. So, h of t will be equal to d g of t then d t. So, what we have here this is a simple exercise we can easily do it. So, what we have 1 by k and then within bracket first term will be 0 because that is constant and then we have minus e to the power minus eta omega n t that is the first term within bracket we will have minus omega d sin omega d t plus the constant term then omega d instead of sin we will have cos omega t t. And then we will have uh, minus then we have to differentiate this exponential function. So, uh, minus eta omega n t will come here and so we will have plus eta omega n times e to the power minus eta omega n t and then within bracket cos omega d t plus the constant term and multiplied by the sign component. Okay. So, we can simplify this expression. So, if we do that, we take this e to the power minus eta omega n t out. So, e to the power minus eta omega n t divided by k. Then we have the first term. So, the first term will be 
omega d sin omega d t then minus eta omega d square root of 1 minus eta square cos omega d t and then we have plus eta omega n cos omega d t and then plus eta square omega n divided by 1 minus eta square sin omega d t. Now, if you recall what is omega d? That is nothing but omega n times square root of 1 minus eta square. Obviously, if I divide both side by square root of 1 minus eta square, what we will have? Eta n. So, we can replace this, we will have eta then omega n and you can immediately sense, so this will get cancelled. Fine. So, what we have again one by k and in the numerator we have e to the power minus eta omega n t times sin omega d t and within bracket we have in place of omega d we can write omega n and then square root of 1 minus eta square plus so this will be eta square omega n 1 minus eta square now what we can do we can further simplify this expression so what we have e to the power minus eta omega n t then in place of k we know k is equal to m omega n square so we have m omega n square and then square root of 1 minus eta square then sin omega d t and here what we have is omega n if we take common so 1 minus eta square plus eta square obviously these two will get cancelled so we'll have only omega n here and that also will get uh, cancelled by this 1 omega n in the denominator so ultimately what we'll have is 1 by m we have omega n 1 omega n here and then times square root of 1 minus eta square so that is omega d times e to the power minus eta omega n t sin omega d t. So, that is the expression for impulse response function h of t is nothing but 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t times sin omega d t. That is the expression for impulse response function. What does it mean? We have a impulse force acting at t equal to 0 and for that we find out what is the response of that single degree of freedom system and uh, this is the expression for that response. Now, as I said we will plot this expression, we will see how does it look like for the time being let us complete the derivation. So, what we are trying to do if we have say a arbitrary force, so we have a force time history
So, what is that? So, we have say if this is an earthquake, we have this is the recording. Obviously, we record um, ground acceleration that we can convert to the force for so for the time being if we consider a forcing function which is an arbitrary function. The question that we are trying to address is how to find out the response due to this arbitrary loading because all other previous loading that we considered they are defined by some mathematical expression. So, if you have a constant force or a sinusoidal force or a block force also then all of them are defined by the some mathematical form, but here in this case we have this arbitrary forcing function. Now, the question is how we can use this impulse response function to find out the response of the structure for this type of loading. Before we do that, let us again uh, revisit what we mean by impulse response function. It is the unit impulse applied at t equal to 0 and for that we find out what is the response for all t. Now, what we can imagine this forcing function as a collection of say this is the amplitude. So, this is say f star. So, if I multiply this f star by a impulse acting at this time point say t star and then consider the complete time history as a collection of impulse at different time point, then we can represent this arbitrary forcing function using a train of impulse. And that will help us because for every impulse we know what is the response and if we mathematically sum them up, we can expect to find out what is the response due to this arbitrary loading and that is precisely what we are going to do. So, for that let us just redraw this forcing function so that we can clearly understand what we are doing. So, we have a forcing function defined for all t. So, and this is the forcing function f of t. Now, just imagine we have a forcing function like this. Then we can consider a differential element at time t equal to say tau. So, we consider a differential element d of tau on time axis at t equal to now, if I consider an impulse acting, so what will be the magnitude of the force? f of tau, f tau times d tau is actually the magnitude of the force, right. So, this acts as an impulse. So, it acts as an impulse at time tau. Now, obviously, for this impulse at time tau, we can find out the response. What will be that? H t minus tau. So, t is any say arbitrary point. So, this is my t, let me put it t star. So, will be t star minus tau. So, this is the response at t star due to a impulse acting at tau. So, this is the time shifted version of this unit impulse response function because we consider this uh, force acting as an impulse when the time is tau. So, at that point, if we find out what is the impulse response function, so this is the impulse response function. And now for that, if we have say d of x of t is the response due to this uh, impulse acting at uh, tau. So, what we have this we can easily write down. 
for unit we have the response h t minus tau that is the response due to unit impulse multiplied by the magnitude of the force. So, we have f tau d tau. Now, if we find out what is the total uh, response at time t equal small t. So, from 0 to t we will integrate this function on the right hand side also put 0 to t. So, what we will get x of t is equal to what 0 to t f of tau h t minus tau t tau. See if we evaluate this integral what we will get on the left hand side we will get the response due to an arbitrary loading. Now, this is called Duhamel's integral. It is a convolution integral what it convolutes forcing function with unit impulse response. You can also prove that this is because this is a convolution integral f of t minus tau times h tau d tau. So, they are same just uh, take it as an exercise just find the logic you can easily show that this is a convolution integral. Now, what it gives us the main um, issue is that the response x of t due to an arbitrary forcing function. Now, obviously, when we have uh, arbitrary forcing function what will be the total response x of t will be what? e to the power minus eta omega n t then times a cos omega d t plus b sin omega d t then plus 0 to t f tau h t minus tau d tau. Again note use complete expression for finding out the constants a and b. So, this is important. So, you have to consider the initial conditions, define the initial conditions and find out the constants a and b from this total response. Do not use the other expressions that we have derived for other uh, cases. You have to consider this complete expression, but there is a small difficulty I leave that as an exercise. The issue is if you wish to satisfy initial conditions. So, you have initial conditions x 0 and then x dot 0 is x. Now, the moment you do that you have to differentiate this function. So, I leave that as an exercise for you and complete this find out sorry this will be x naught 0 can be a special case. So, for that you have to find out what will be your a and b constant of integration, but the fact is you have to use this complete expression to find out the constants a and b. So, whenever we have uh, this type of arbitrary forcing function, our main approach is to find out what is h of t. We have derived the close form expression if you recall it is 1 by m omega d 
e to the power minus eta omega n t sin omega d t. So, that is the impulse response function and then we have to find out the convolution integral 0 to t f tau h t minus tau. So, this expression we will uh, try to solve numerically and we will see how we can use numerical techniques to find out the solution because that is how we will solve this. We cannot have a closed form expression in this case and for that we will go for numerical solution. So, that will be our um, topic for tomorrow's discussion. We will use different techniques to solve this. Any numerical technique to find out integral uh, we will do, we will investigate how to uh, find out the response. So, today the most important thing we have derived initial response, then we extend that to find out impulse response function and then using that impulse response function we derived uh, the expression for uh, response when we have uh, arbitrary forcing function and this integral what we call is very important Duhamel's integral. So, with that let me close here in the next class we will solve this expression numerically. Thank you very much. Thank you.